And today I will uh, speak about uh, uh, the, the, the title is Carved in Stone, Unique Medieval Depictions of uh, Rural Dress in Estonia. And uh, I'll introduce uh, two medieval uh, stone carvings uh, depicting fully clothed uh, uh, figures. I'll compare the information with, uh, about the dress uh, with archaeological sources. And the aim of this contribution uh, is to illustrate on the basis of a case study how different sources can uh, communi communicate uh, with each other and also complement each other. The comparison with the archaeological sources uh, also helps to consider how the images correspond to the cultural reality in uh, which it was made. I mean, again, with what is uh, artistic uh, uh, part of the image and uh, what is the re real life, the questions uh, we are considering already, uh, we considered already earlier. Uh, uh, because, uh, and by the way, one of the basis of the presentation is of course the uh, assumption that the very important function of uh, clothing is communication and uh, sharing information about various social position and origin, for example. And the, the context is always important. So first I will introduce uh, uh, the context and I'll start with setting up the scene. Uh, now uh, we have heard uh, presentations uh, from Italy and from Asia and uh, from Britain and now we have moved uh, farther north, uh, to north. So Estonia uh, is located here, near Scandinavia and uh, near Scandinavia. And uh, the period under study is really the 13th century. In the early 13th century, German and Danish crusades and violent Christianization took place in the area of present-day Estonia. This event marks also uh, the beginning of the medieval period in Estonian chronology. Uh, Christianization caused uh, the integration of uh, the area into the political, social and religious structures of Western Europe. It, mean, it meant also uh, uh, adopting a new faith and building, for example, churches. And uh, uh, the area under study is uh, island Sarema, uh, located in uh, Baltic Sea. It is called also Oisilia or Ursa. Uh, the island of Sarema was the last uh, of Estonian counties uh, which adopt, uh, adopted Christianity in 1227. It seems that, uh, in, uh, that the old local elite of Sarama kept uh, their privileges and power, which is exceptional in the context of Estonia. Uh, probably they participated also in the establishment of the first churches on the island. So as um, I also want to uh, say that speaking about clothing, it is important that after the conquest, a uh, ruling German minority clustered mainly in towns and manors, uh, they brought along European fashion, so they dressed uh, uh, themselves as in other parts of Europe, uh, or in northern European towns at least, but rural areas remained inhabited with local people, and uh, daily routine continued on the basis of local prehistoric traditions, and it meant also that uh, dressing habits and making cloth uh, remained uh, different from other parts of Europe. Uh, for centuries. Um, medieval depictions of local inhabitants are almost absent in Estonia. This is because these carved stone uh, figures are uh, really unique. And uh, these uh, uh, sculptures uh, uh, are in two Sarema churches, uh, Karja and Böide. Uh, the churches were built in various uh, stages in the course of the 13th century, uh, but both uh, figural scenes uh, were carved in the end of the 13th century. Art historians believe that uh, the sculptures were made by the same group of itinerant uh, stonemasons. On the basis of technique and stylistic analysis, uh, it has been argued that uh, these uh, artisans came from North German, via Gotland. 
as the sculptures have been carved uh, of local stone uh, of Sarama, uh, they probably lived uh, on spot for a while and uh, they saw local islanders uh, uh, and uh, so the, the, they, they really saw these people they were depicting. Uh, thus the images provide opportunity uh, not only to glimpse how people represented themselves to themselves but also uh, how they were represented by others uh, to the audience. What did the foreign artisans uh, see and what was worth highlighting from their part? And finally, I'll introduce the principal actors themselves. First, Karya sculptures, uh, these are there, uh, illustrate the scene serving a moral purpose. According to art historians, uh, a young man hurts uh, with a married woman. Uh, her head uh, is covered. The devil on the backside of the man indicates improper ideas, uh, thoughts and actions. The parts of clothing are following. The woman's head is covered with a headscarf. Uh, the, uh, her shawl is fastened with a penannular brooch uh, on the chest. Below, uh, you can see a decorated uh, apron hem. The man wears a hat and a shawl fastened with the banana, also with banana brooch uh, on the right shoulder in this time. Uh, hat has curly surface, so uh, it can uh, indicate uh, that uh, it has been made of sheepskin. And uh, now, uh, secondly, uh, this is actually the same uh, uh, sculpture, but the, this is the woman and this is uh, the male figure. They just, I didn't have a photo where they were both on at the same time. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, this is a very representative couple standing. The lady is very similar to the Garia sculpture. She's uh, uh, also wearing a shawl fastened with a brooch on the chest and a decorated apron. Unfortunately, the headdress area is damaged and not entirely visible, but it's definite, it's definite that her head is covered with something more complex than Karya Lady. Karya Lady had only the uh, scarf. She's holding a drinking horn, which may be interpreted as a symbol of power. The man is wearing also a hat, but other, otherwise he differs from previous uh, male figure. And especially note, noteworthy is uh, his coat. I don't know how well it's visible here, but uh, the front opening is V-shaped. Uh, it has pleated front parts and the sleeves uh, fitted nicely around the arms, gradually uh, narrowing towards the wrist. A similar cut has been used, uh, for example, in contemporaneous uh, Scandinavia. Uh, so it's not actually a peculiar local fashion that uh, art historians have always uh, stressed by these figures. And this is not uh, surprising because uh, Sarama Island and uh, Scandinavia has a really tight context, uh, uh, contacts uh, already long time. Uh, and of course, it cannot be excluded actually that the man is from abroad. Anyway, the couple has been interpreted as being the building patrons of the church. This is uh, uh, another sculpture group uh, in Garia Church. And now you can, I hope you can see the difference between the female clothing. This is completely another style. So it's uh, more uh, Europe European fashion or uh, this is St. Catherine. And now I will uh, 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 represent, uh, I will speak about uh, uh, the comparison with archaeological material. Uh, for the comparison, 53 other adult burials uh, in Sarama were studied to collect information about the uh, clothing. The graves have been dated really to the for, uh, for, uh, 13th century. Uh, remarkably more relevant finds have been collected from female graves, so the following study will focus more on them. I won't describe every grave, but only summarize very general trends. 
And of course, genesis of uh, iconographical and archaeological sources uh, uh, is very different. Uh, thus, the comparison is always a little bit problematic. It's not time to discuss it here uh, long, but the archaeological sources uh, about uh, dress are extremely fragmented. Usually, textiles do not preserve, so we have only metal parts. Uh, and if the depiction is a full set from one moment, the archaeology gives us uh, only scattered bits of information from numerous graves. At the same time, uh, next slide already. At the same time, it reveals the variation in the costume. For example, decorative pins, uh, dress pins, and penannular brooches often together with chain arrangements and belts with various hangings were used for fastening clothing items at the period. It seems that uh, these elements uh, have been combined uh, freely in various ways. For example, sometimes the chains uh, were fastened with pins on the shoulders, sometimes with brooches, uh, and sometimes uh, you can find one brooch and one pin in the grave. Occasionally, also just one brooch was discovered on the chest. This is the most right figure. It means that in the similar, it was in the similar position as depicted uh, on the carvings. Uh, important source. Uh, uh, for clothing, uh, in this case, uh, is uh, decorations made of tiny spiral tubes uh, bound uh, of co copper alloy uh, wire. Uh, these ornaments uh, were widely used uh, to adorn clothing items in the East Baltic, uh, already in the prehistory, but also at the, at the beginning of the Middle Ages, in, according to Estonian <coughs> chronology. <laughs> And, uh, of course, uh, uh, the graves reveal uh, uh, us traces about funeral dress, which is uh, a special occasion. And it's not about uh, clothing that people uh, wore during their daily life or uh, when they uh, were alive. And uh, it has been assumed in Estonia, at least on the basis of grave finds, that uh, it's, it's probably a festive attire. Uh, maybe uh, it's not Christian tradition yet, so it's a festive attire, and uh, maybe it is at least part related with wedding costumes. So anyway, it has a special meaning and a special context. In the context of present study, uh, study uh, due details of the costumes are worth pointing out. Uh, first, it seems that penannular brooches uh, caught uh, the eyes of the foreigners who carved the sculptures. Uh, by the 13th century, the penannular brooches were disappeared in North Europe, but in Estonia this type lasted until the 17th century. Noteworthy is the clear ridge in the middle part of the brooches worn by Karja Mann, actually, and also a very uh, woman. Sorry, the pictures are quite... Uh, I didn't have so good pictures to zoom really nicely in. And, uh, uh, and similar brooches have been sometimes also uh, found in archaeological excavations in graves, but they are not very uh, numerous, only uh, rarely uh, the, the ridge is there. And this, it's not worthy because uh, the carvings are relatively uh, schematic, but uh, this tiny detail has uh, stressed again. And another distinctive uh, feature is the apron. The decorated lower hems are in both cases clearly visible. You can see them here. Uh, and on the basis of grey finds, an apron adorned with spiral tube decorations belonged to the costume of a married woman here and there in East Baltic. Uh, and in Finland, for example. In Saarema, such spiral tube decorations on the shin bones have been discovered as well. Uh, you can see two pictures here. It is quite clear that the details of the spiral tube decorations were not familiar to the stone carver because uh, the artisan has uh, 
actually depicted on that diagram. I don't know how well you can see, but the, uh, uh, the artisan probably depicted the closest metal thing uh, uh, or, no, or no, uh, decoration thing he knew. The, the, this apron uh, decoration re resembles more uh, metal mounts used, for example, on belts. So, uh, but it's quite clear that uh, it is uh, parallel to these uh, spiral tube decorations, actually, these metal, metal decorations that we have found from gra graves. Uh, headdress and shawls uh, are also emphasized, but uh, no exact parallels can be pointed out among archaeological finds, mainly because uh, of the preservation issues. Uh, nevertheless, some finds indicating uh, presence of these accessories have been discovered. For example, uh, one uh, headdress uh, decorated with spiral tubes, and uh, in one case, probably spiral tubes uh, are indicating something similar to the shawl. Uh, it, it, it may interpret uh, as, a, as a remains of a shawl. And now some comments about male uh, costume. Uh, there is almost no information about uh, male dress on the basis of grave finds, and because of uh, that, is uh, not much. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I can't compare uh, uh, these things. Usually, only remains of belts, along with items uh, worn hanging from the waist, have been discovered. It is possible uh, to make only two remarks. First. Karyaman is using a brooch to fasten his cloak on the right shoulder, this figure uh, up, up there. And um, in the 13th century, no such brooches were found in the male graves anymore. But uh, the earlier cremation, uh, cremations from the 12th century contained often uh, this kind of brooches. So maybe this figure is depicted in the old-fashioned way or, of course, maybe it wasn't common to use uh, a brooch and a shawl in the, uh, uh, by the funeral clothing. Uh, secondly, the man wears something hanging from the waist. It's not possible to uh, understand what is the exact shape of the item, uh, but it might be a leather purse uh, together with necessary utensils. Moreover, uh, he is not using brooch, so uh, he fits well together with the uh, grave finds. And to conclude, uh, iconographic and archaeological sources fit relatively well, to, uh, well together. They help to create a more elaborated uh, context for both sources, and uh, they also uh, complement our knowledge about past uh, clothing in general. Uh, the comparison with archaeological finds uh, further proves that the aim of the stone carvers uh, was to depict locals. It is interesting to note uh, how they have chosen details to achieve this uh, purpose in the way that is uh, recognizable. It was recognizable probably also to the audience. Moreover, it is a good example for illustrating uh, clothing as a medium to express identity, social status and origin. And what, what is interesting uh, for me especially is, uh, for example, local female dress with uh, its peculiar traits, shawl, brooch, apron, and probably also a headdress um, has definitely caught the, the foreigners' eyes. And uh, the roots of this uh, kind of costume are in the previous century, in the 12th century already. So it, it shows that the female uh, at, uh, dress was uh, somehow traditional and static. Uh, and uh, the, the, it, it's probably uh, meaningful attire uh, maybe indicated the marital status of, uh, of the woman because uh, similar costumes uh, were probably worn also uh, were used for uh, uh, 
as a fu funeral dress and uh, it also stresses uh, that uh, it was a meaningful costume uh, and it was probably important in woman's life and uh, expressed uh, the, her identity in the community. At the same time, it seems that uh, the male dress was more um, open uh, to the uh, uh, foreign influences and uh, male were more wearing, uh, 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 maybe moving around and uh, having influences from, from abroad. So thank you very much.